Hello everyone, Adrian here. So today we are doing another absinthe review. Today we're going to be reviewing Kron Opel or Kron Opel. I'm terribly sorry, I don't speak Swedish. And uh, judging by the name of this absinthe, you guys are probably going to come to the conclusion that it is indeed Swedish. And you are correct. I feel bad that I didn't pronounce that like spot on correctly. I'm just taking a shot at it. I'm so sorry. So this is one of the two samples of absinthe that Rory sent me. So after I go through this one, I'll have one more that I'll get to sample. And then that's it for me for now, unfortunately. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I really wish that I had more to review, but after this, I will search absinthe.com and see what else I can find that is uh, nifty, cool, in demand, delicious, green. So, like I said, he had dipped a little bit into my bottle of Fleur Bleu, and he said in exchange for the little taste he had of Fleur Bleu, he would give me a couple of samples, and uh, Grand Opel was one of them. Before I get into it, I do want to let you guys know that I have changed my lighting setup here on my set just a little bit to look a little bit better, a little bit higher quality, and I also want the camera to pick up my highlighter because what's the point of wearing green highlighter in absinthe reviews if you can't see it, right? So I did invest in a ring light. I did get some other small pieces of furniture on my set to make some more room, and I was able to get some better lighting behind me, if that makes any sense. So if you notice the increase in quality or anything like that, please tell me. If you like it, do you not like it? Of course, why would you not like, you know, increased quality of something. Just saying. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go on to absinthe.com and give you the information that they are providing as far as Gron Opel is concerned. And I did move my microphone a little bit so that I can do my ASMR a little bit easier and a little bit closer to camera, so let's do this. The Gron Opel Absinthe, Swedish for green opal, is made according to a French recipe from the 19th century. For several years, the two distillers from Svenk Absinthe have worked on making the perfect recipe and finding the ideal sources of herbs. We are delighted to offer you the Kron Opel and the Vit Opel exclusively on absinthe.com. And of course, I will have a link for the absinthe in the description below. The Kron Opel is characterized by its intense and fruity Swedish wormwood. Not sure how I feel about the idea of fruity wormwood, but we'll see how it goes. My friend Rory did assure me that this one was rather delicious. All right, carrying on. The secret of this absence complex and delicious taste is due to the distiller's choice to make the highest quality herbs without compromising. It means going out in the countryside looking for wild growing grand wormwood. It means taking the time to grow lemon balm, hyssop, and roman wormwood in their garden. I love lemon balm, and I love hyssop. So, this sounds pretty yummy. I haven't smelled it yet, but I will. It means meticulously finding the finest sources of plants that grow in hotter climates, like anise and fennel. Before bottling, the absinthe is rested at least three months in barrels. Ooh. It's barrel aged. Ah! That's so exciting. Okay. Sorry, I just get really excited about the idea of barrel aged absinthe. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Don't judge me. Okay. So that its flavor smooths out, as most of the work requires intense manual effort and a lot of time, only small batches of this absinthe are produced. Okay. This sounds incredibly tempting. This sounds incredibly delicious. I'm glad that they really went into detail about how they get the herbs that they use to make this one and just striving for the highest quality and seemingly going for the pre-banned standard of absinthe. So I'm really excited to try this and I'm glad that Rory selected it for me from his collection. 
So now all that remains is I'm going to reposition the camera and the ring light that I got so that you guys can get a closer look at Kon Opal. So let's do this. All right, guys, here we are. I have repositioned the camera in order to prepare for the louche. I am really excited for this one based on the description and based on what Rory told me about it. So let's go ahead and take a good look at this. Okay, so here's our little sample bottle. I will insert a picture of the actual bottle in... Ooh, baby. Oh boy, that is a sec... Oh my god. That is a sexy looking absinthe right there. Ooh, boy. This is slightly deeper in color than La Ponte Saliena, so this is a... wow. Actually, scratch that. I would say that this is halfway between La Ponte Saliena and Hieronymus Bosch Tentacion Welt as far as color is concerned. That is so deep! Oh my god. So, as you can see, it has a very pleasant color, and I'm guessing based on the description that the coloring is indeed natural. And that is what I would prefer anyway, as far as absinthe is concerned, is for the coloring to be natural. Wow, that is really something. Look at that, guys. That is a perfect shade of peridot. Like, it's green, and it's lovely, and it has a little hint of gold in there. Um, I would say that I actually like the coloring of this slightly more than La Ponte Saliene. So, coloring and appearance, clarity... Everything like that, I would give five stars for appearance. Definitely has a different kind of sweeter quality than other absinths that I have been drinking recently. So I'm wondering how that will shape up as the louche is created. So definitely five stars for appearance. That is so gorgeous. Wow. That is so fucking green. All right, we're going to go for it, guys. Rory did advise me that the coloring of this was going to be very opalescent and very opaque. So I'm looking forward to seeing how right he's going to be on that mark. Wow. Lord. Oh my god, I, I love the little tones of gold that are showing up in there. That is so pretty. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Look at that, guys. Oh, man. Again, I really wish you guys had smell of vision because this smells incredible. It's looking slightly dull, but I'm sure that as the louche goes on, it'll get a little less dull and a lot prettier. I'm really enjoying watching the process. Wow, that is so milky. Look at that. Ooh, she definitely has some sourness to her, doesn't she? Like, almost spicy. Like, I'm getting a kind of rosemary kind of whisper in the air as I'm taking a good sniff of this. I'll just speed this along a little faster. I'm really glad that the camera and my phone are both capturing its true color right now. Because, dear God, this is gorgeous. This is so pretty. It's looking a little more yellow in real life than it is on camera, but that's just me. But you guys can see how pretty this is. Dear God. Very pretty. I would say that La Ponte Saliena is um, slightly prettier than this one. Just barely slightly because La Ponte Saliena had a little more green to it. Uh, this one is a little more gold toned. But still very, very, very pretty.
All right, guys, let's call that good. All right, that is the louche for Con Opal. As you can see, it's very opalescent. It is very pretty. And I'm really liking the shades of green and gold in here. That is really gorgeous. I will say appearance of the louche, I would definitely give it five stars. All right, all that remains is to do the taste test. So once again, I'm going to reposition the camera and my ring light, of course, and we are going to give this a sniff and a taste and give our overall impression. All right, guys, here is our glass of Colon Opal. Um, so as you can see, it is very opaque and opalescent, really pretty. I really like the tones of gold and green in there. It's definitely comparable. Actually, I would say it's slightly more opaque than La Ponte Saliena, so definitely five stars on appearance, like I said. It's so pretty. So let's get a load of the nose, shall we? Ooh, baby. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's fruitier, so to speak, than any other absence that I have tried. Because it's strange that they described the uh, wormwood as fruity. I am definitely getting a very heavy hint of wormwood in there. That's probably what the rosemary whisper is that I'm smelling there. It seems to be very well balanced because I like that the anise and the fennel are not overpowering all of the other botanicals. It really smells like rosemary. I can't get over it, man. <laughs> it's great. Totally not going to complain about it smelling like rosemary because I love rosemary. Okay, shut up, Adrian. Let's drink it. Okay, so aroma. I would definitely give it, I'll say, four and a half stars. It's really lovely, though. Again, I wish you guys had smell a vision so you could get an idea of what this tastes like and smells like because you know how they say the first taste is with the nose that's exactly what i'm talking about here all right we're gonna go in for a taste so as always guys at salte and please drink responsibly let's do this oh wow dear god That is fruity. <laughs> it has a very strange combination of a lemony and rosemary uh, kind of finish and aftertaste, but I'm not complaining. Definitely not complaining because I love rosemary. I love kind of lemon balm or um, lemon peel kind of thing. So would I describe this as fruity? Oddly enough, yes. <laughs> I understand now. I understand where they get the term fruity for describing their wormwood. This is great. It's a really nice combination of sweet and sour. So if you're a really big fan of lemon balm and things like that, things that have a kind of lemony fragrance, but also really like things that are very rosemary forward, then I would definitely recommend this one. This is really good. Like, it almost reminds me of having sour candy. Like, you know how, like, the core of the candy itself is, like, super sour? And then it has, like, a little uh, sweet sugar coating on the outside. I really love sour candy, to be honest. Like, I <laughs> sour Skittles are my crack. <laughs> I absolutely love sour Skittles. So that just goes to show you guys I have a bitter palate, and I love sour things, and I love things that are bitter, and I love things that are rich and full-bodied. So... Uh, this is definitely for someone who has a bitter palate. This is great. This is like the sour candy of absinthe. But then it gives you that little whisper of rosemary and lemon balm at the end. That is so nice. But again, the rosemary flavor I'm tasting, I'm describing it as rosemary, not because I think that there's rosemary in here, but I'm describing it as rosemary-like to give you guys an idea of the wormwood flavor that is presenting itself, because sometimes wormwood can present itself as kind of a rosemary 
sort of flavor. Oh my god, I'm drooling! I'm seriously drooling! <laughs> wow. This is something. Gosh, that's lovely. It definitely gives you a little more of a punch at the end of the taste there, but again, I'm not complaining about that. It's wonderful. I will definitely give the flavor of this four stars. No, four and a half. I'll, I'll be fair and give it four and a half, because I like this almost as much as La Ponte Salienda. I think because La Ponte Salienda is a, in a weird way, slightly more mellow than this is. I don't know how to explain it, but I like La Puta Salienda slightly more than this. It definitely does taste like a traditional pre-ban absinthe, and it's lovely. So if you are looking for an experience that will mirror a pre-ban absinthe, definitely go for this. Yeah, guys, I'm really liking this. This is pretty great. Very nice treat. Like I said, it's a little more on the bitter side, but it does have its own kind of subtle sweetness to it. So, like I said, it's definitely the sour candy of absinthe. Which, again, I'm not going to complain about. <laughs> because I love sour candy, because I'm crazy. <laughs> uh, no, actually, someone who's crazier than I am when it comes to sour things is Kenny. So, one thing that Kenny will do, I shit you not, he does this. I have seen him do this. <laughs> he will take slices of lemon, like if he's like um, squeezing lemon over something that we're cooking together or something, or garnishing something with lemon. <laughs> he will literally take a slice of lemon and stick it in his mouth and suck on it, and then I will laugh my ass off when he makes the little face that you naturally make after you have something sour. Just like, Neh. It's not necessarily that he hates it, it's just that he enjoys the sour flavor of the lemon. So, he and I are very much alike in that regard where we do like a certain amount of bitter things and sour things, and we both really like sour candy too. And we both really love dark chocolate as well. Alright, so, flavor. I would definitely give this four and a half stars for flavor. That was really lovely. Like I said, it made me drool. I'm literally drooling right now. This is like the third absinthe that I have had that has made me drool. That's crazy. Um, I don't know if there's some kind of botanical in there that's causing me to drool or if it's just, oh my god, this is so good, I'm drooling kind of thing. So as far as the finish is concerned, it has a very rich and silky mouthfeel. And I'm guessing the intensity of the color is somewhat attributed to the fact that it is barrel aged because I noticed that the color in barrel aged absinths tend to be a little bit deeper, a little bit more intense. And it does tend to make a positive contribution to the overall experience and the finish of the absinthe. So it's definitely smooth, it's definitely silky, it's definitely very full bodied and different. Honestly, I didn't get that much of an anise sort of flavor with this one. This was just really forward on the wormwood and on the lemon balm. But again, I'm not going to complain about that because that's really lovely. So finish, I will give it four and a half stars as well. So overall, this absinthe, fantastic. I really, really liked it. Not quite as much as La Pote Salienne because I would say that La Ponte Salienda is a little less accosting to the senses and was just really lovely and mellow overall compared to this one. Only slightly though. Those are my thoughts on Con Opal. So have you guys heard of this absinthe? And if so, uh, tell me what you've heard about it. And if you think that it's a good one, if you've had it before, uh, let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts about it. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and be sure to hit the bell for notifications. You guys are amazing. I love you and I'll see you guys later. Bye.